My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Such a powerful and provocative cry that we hear from Jesus on the cross today. It stands in stark contrast to how we began our our symbolic journey with him from waving of palms and proclaiming all glory, laud, and honor to just in a few short days, in a span of less than an hour, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And he breathed his last. It strikes me that throughout this entire process, throughout our entire gospel this morning, Jesus never says a word in his defense. He never speaks or or raises a, a voice in his defense to call upon others to defend him, even if he won't defend himself. And he doesn't call out to God and using the, the powers that God holds to save himself. Instead, the only phrase that he chooses to offer, his last words on this earth in that moment, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? This is a cry of lament. Lament is something I think all of us have been experiencing a lot of lately. If we think about the journey that we've taken in the last three weeks, we've gone from everything as normal to the entire world being turned upside down and changed. And what comes out of that so often um, we, we are enculturated to, to either think the entire world is falling apart and to, to, to avoid lamenting and grief and just go straight to the negativity. Or we're, we're primed to, to find the silver lining in things, to, to dash straight to, all right, what's the good that's going to come out of this? What we're not primed to do by our culture, what we are not often taught to do is dwell in that in-betweenness we call lament, where we deal with the emotions of grief and uncertainty, of confusion, that space where we recognize that 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 false facade and reality that we put up that says we can control our lives, lament brings us to the point where we recognize We really aren't in control of much. It's an emotion that I think we have experienced and brushed through, and yet I wonder how Jesus might be inviting us to embrace our lament this holy week. For in his final breath, Jesus offers lament, not as a way of challenging God, not as a way of him rebuking and pushing God away, but in an act of faith. For we see Jesus, even as he laments what is going on, what is happening, he is still journeying through it, understanding that God's response may not come in the way that he expects, but will come and be fulfilled because God fulfills God's promises. And when we approach our lamenting questions this way, how long will this pandemic go on? Why, O oh God, is the world the way it is right now? When we have those moments where we cannot see the answer and all we can cry is just why? Where are you, God? It is so easy to think that that is a denial of our faith, when the reality is it is an act of faith. Because what it means is we are seeking God out, even in the midst of our unknowing. We still lean into God and trusting in God to fulfill what God has promised to give the world.
So in this time, in this holy time of disjointedness, where we cannot gather as we have been for centuries as the church to honor these holy days, though we cannot journey together in the usual way and gather to celebrate a week from now in the typical way. These are still holy times that God invites us into to experience something different. Perhaps this season we need to allow ourselves to lament, to sit into the uncertainty, into the unknowingness to give up that false sense of control and trust that even if it seems that God does not hear us, that God is not present, that God does respond, perhaps in ways we never thought or imagined, but God responds. And God's faithfulness to God's people is true. For we know the end of this passage. We know that on the third day, Easter comes. In that moment when Jesus cries on the cross, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? We see that he was not forsaken even then. It's just that he didn't get to know how God was going to respond next. So as we begin our Holy Week, I invite you to offer your laments in this season to God. To sit in the disjointedness of this world, for it is only by experiencing the lament and the disjointedness that we can truly celebrate the joy of the resurrection on Easter. So free yourself and offer up to God your laments. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Amen.